Hello my friends and welcome, we have some awesome news especially coming from the Bakhmut area. Let's zoom in to the place and here Ukrainian army moves forward. The fighting now is ongoing for the lake near to Klishivka and after it Ukraine will move towards the village itself. Let's see the advancement of Ukrainian army. It was yesterday, it is today. So 100% we took this very important height, we took the valley between the hills, plus the Ukrainian forces went down below the hill and actually the fighting is ongoing in Klishivka. Klishivka, there is double I. Let's review the story for the last week. As you can see the advancement of Ukrainian army is quite nice. Actually, Ukraine takes more ground compared to the Wagner soldiers, but if we speak about the Bakhmut area, yes, I would agree that fighting for Bakhmut is more complicated than fighting for Klishivka, for example. So the scale of this counteroffensive is uncomparable to what it was before the Ukrainian army tried to keep the Bakhmut city under control. But now we have the good perspective for the Bakhmut city to be encircled in a nearby future. At least the Ukrainian army does everything possible to make this scenario real. Let's go to the south part of the front lines to Orihiv area and there Ukraine actually tried to counterattack more. Our forces went forward, we have the military map clarification and Robotina is not far away really from the front line so hopefully Ukraine will advance towards these positions. So actually the Russian publics were right about the next attempt of the Ukrainian counterattack just in this area. It happens very rare that Russians are right. Also just right now they start to share the information about the Piaty Hatki that Ukraine is getting ready for one more jump in attempt to take the nearby villages and the road under control. This road actually leads to Tokmak and also there is the way to the south to Melitopol itself. So I would say that it's quite important part of the front lines, however Russia put lots of the defense lines just into that area. Why it could be true that Ukraine starts the new counterattack on the south? Because just this morning Ukraine launched lots of the long-range missiles including Storm Shadow towards Tokmak, Melitopol and Berdansk. By the way, Russia lost one more general in Berdansk. The Lieutenant General Oleg Tsokov lost his life because of the strikes of the Ukrainian rockets on the headquarters of the Russian army in Berdansk. So Russia lost already many of the generals during this war. Just last month I told you about one more general that lost his life also on the south part of Ukraine. Why is it happening to the Russian generals? Because they have very ancient communication systems and they just can't control their forces remotely and at the same time adequately. So what they do, they just go closer to the front lines within the range of the Storm Shadow or Hymus systems. It also tells a lot about the morale of the average Russian soldier. They need the high rank command to control their actions. So again, the huge loss for the Russian command and the great achievement of Ukrainian army. We have some good news from France. They've decided to supply long-range missiles to Ukraine. Those are Scalp EG, which is the same actually as the Storm Shadow long-range cruise missile. Why? Because this missile was designed together by French and British, like Concord. Initially Ukraine obtains around 50 units. What is interesting about the Scalp AG that according to the information that I was able to find the range of it is 560 kilometers. It seems like there is only one modification of the French type of this missile. If I'm not right, you may correct me in the comment section just below. The Storm Shadow has two of the variants, shorter range and the longer range, which fits the Scalp EG. So that will help Ukraine to achieve the goals on the front lines and I expect that Ukrainian army will take more ground this summer and autumn. There is the question whether Ukraine will make it to Crimea, I hope for it. About Germany, they also have the long-range cruise missile it calls Towers, 
but they said officially that they will not supply this type of weaponry to Ukraine. They are afraid that Ukraine may use this type of the cruise missile to target the Russian territory. Nevertheless, if you check out the graph for the military help of Ukraine, Obviously, number one is the United States of America with a record $42 billion, a little bit less than 43, but Germany has the second place with 7.5 billion euros. After it, the United Kingdom, Poland, Netherlands, Denmark and France is somewhere over here, but they have the critical supplies, as I said to you, the Scalp cruise missiles. Plus the Caesar self-propelled artillery systems, they gave that weaponry that no one wanted to give it to Ukraine, and later on everyone connected and provided the military aid for Ukraine, including artillery and many more. By the way, today Germany announced that they will supply two more Patriot systems to Ukraine, also the modern infantry vehicles and many more. Australia will have with the air surveillance, they will supply this modification of the Boeing 737 surveillance airplane E7A. It will not fly in Ukraine, however, it will fly maybe in Moldova, Romania and Poland to collect the information about Russian troops' movement and to protect our forces during the counterattack. The Russian military bloggers already reported that Ukraine started to use the cluster artillery shells on Tokmak in Zaporizhia Oblast. So just in five days, the United States has delivered those shells to Ukraine kind of strange. According to the Ukrainian intelligence, Wagner PMC during their attempted military coup tried to get control over the Voronezh 45 secret military base that has the nukes. They actually moved towards the place but stopped before reaching it. By the way, I forgot to tell you this news yesterday, Prigozhin met with Putin directly, plus there were some of the Wagner commanders. It happened just after four days, then Prigozhin decided not to go to Moscow. And from the information we have right now, Prigozhin is still in Russia, in Moscow. Alright, not so good news for Ukraine from Vilnius today. NATO is not looking for Ukrainian membership in a nearby perspective, let's say. There was no invitation for Ukraine this time. Basically, there are some of the countries that are not against of Ukrainian membership, but some are not looking for it. What it means for Ukraine that will not have the robust security guarantees in the nearby future. The only possible security guarantee for us would be to join the NATO alliance. Obviously, after the war is over. But according to the general message from the NATO countries, there will be no invitation and Ukraine should fit the NATO standards. Yes, we have lots of the Soviet equipment still, but there are many of the NATO countries, especially from the Eastern Europe, that have the Soviet equipment too. I agree that Ukrainian army needs reforms and our allies are helping us with that. But after all, if we speak about the actual fighting, Ukraine is one on one with Russia. Luckily, we'll still have the military support from our allies and hopefully they will not push Ukraine for some sort of the peace agreement with Russia without liberating all of our territory. In that case, Russia wouldn't stop, they will continue in some of the years and their goal is to eliminate Ukraine. After Ukraine, there will be many more countries, unfortunately. The interesting public transport advertisement in Vilnius, while you are waiting for this bus, Ukraine is waiting for F-16s. I think that ordinary people in Vilnius especially do support Ukraine, so we need this message not on the buses, but we need to show it to politicians. Russia has built the new defense line, the Dragon Tees, as you can see. Actually, this is the Wagner's cemetery. Clearly, we have the conspiracy over here. They put aside the Christian crosses and installed the Mason sign, the pyramid. But actually, they improvised with this form and it shows really the scale of the Russian losses. You probably have already seen this face. This is the Ukrainian chief sergeant. His name is Marcus. He is from the 47th Brigade, also known as Magura. So today he wrote the report asking to dismiss him from his position and to get the lower rank. He said, 
it literally about the humiliation of the job of the surgeon squad in this brigade. He said about the lack of the competence of officers of this brigade in particular. Plus, at the very end, he says that on his own opinion, the deputy of commander of this military branch, and he gives the number, also we have the name but it crossed, is in lack of morale and I translated this word as degenerate degenerate being with that guy in one social group just lowers the dignity well from one side it's not good that this letter went to the social media and now spread everywhere also russians are quite happy now about it but at the same time it brings the light to a real picture than some of the commanders or deputy commanders as in this case are in lack of the competence. You see that Ukraine was the part of the Soviet military school, we call it like that, and it's very hard to break the mentality of those dinosaurs who are still in Ukrainian army and who are not planning to adapt for the new standards. So I would agree that the Ukrainian army needs reforms. As for Marcus, I think he will be supported by the chief Ukrainian military command. He will keep his position and the deputy commander of brigade will go under investigation. I think it will happen like that. And actually, judging from this form, there is no specific incident, accident or something that investigations should investigate really, but I think something should be done to this deputy commander for sure. We need to find the truth and get rid of those dinosaurs who still think that it's the Soviet army. Personally, I believe Valery Marcus and he wouldn't write this without the specific reason. Yes, and unfortunately, it's not a fake. My friends, as you can see, we also may have some of the disappointing news, but it's life, it's war, it is not a victory parade for Ukraine, it is a very hard job that is done by every Ukrainian soldier, and I believe that the Ukrainian army will be able to liberate all of its territories from the Russian occupiers. Now just press the like to this video, and also if you want to support my job, there will be some of the links just in the video description below, and special thanks for my Patreon supporters and the sponsors of my YouTube channel, thank you so much for your awesome support. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky, wherever you are, and have a great time.